Hey guys, we have started Macbeth and I wanted to take a moment to discuss Act 1. All right, so here we go. Um, you have read Act 1. You should be into Act 2 by now. Um, you can find the book by going to ths.tisd.org, going to Departments and then Library, clicking Destiny, clicking Temple High School, then you log in with your normal login information, search for Macbeth, and you find the white, black, and red book cover, and then you open it and download it. Okay, so that is how you find the book. And if you're having any questions, please let me know and we can schedule a phone call and I can walk you through it. Um, here we go. Here's Act One. So Act One starts with three weird sisters. Now, what's interesting about the three weird sisters, weird, they're called the weird sisters later on. And it's, you know, the same weird spelling that we use for weird today. This is one of the first times weird is used that way. Um, it derives from an old English word for weird, spelled W-Y-R-D, uh, which means fate. And so the weird sisters like are really referring to their being witches. Um, but eventually the word weird grows to mean strange or odd the way that we know it today. So here are the three weird sisters, the three witches, and they are on a battlefield. Um, they are on, in a field, in a pasture, on a battlefield. And in the background, you have um, a battle going on. And you in Act 1, Scene 2, you hear what happens in the battle from a soldier who's wounded retelling it to Duncan. But so far we have the three witches. And so we have, um, when shall we three meet again, in thunder, lightning, or in rain, when the hurly-burly's done, when the battle's lost and won. Basically that's saying, that's letting us know that the witches will reconvene once the battle that's going on in the background ends. Okay. Um, where the place upon the heath there to meet with Macbeth. So they're going to meet with Macbeth after the battle is won. Okay, so that's Act 1, Scene 1. Then we have Act 1, Scene 2, um, which is a camp. You have Duncan, who's the King of Scotland, with all of his, his uh, Malcolm and Donalbane are his sons, and then Lennox and the attendants um, are, are other lords. Okay, and um, this is an, a camp they are waiting to find out about the battle results. And so you have Malcolm telling, um, and a soldier has come and a soldier is wounded from battle and the soldier is telling Duncan what happened in the battle. So Duncan and Malcolm are basically like, what happened soldier? And the soldier says, um, doubtful it stood as two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke their art. The merciless McDonald worthy to be a rebel from the Western Isles and fortune on his damned quarrel smiling like a rebel's whore. Okay, so McDonald is the rebel and he is the one rebelling against Duncan. And he is um, rebelling, but Macbeth, for M brave Macbeth, well he deserves that name, disdaining fortune with his brandished steel, which smoked with bloody execution like valor's minion, carved out his passage till he faced the slave meaning Macbeth is carving out his passage, meaning cut, he, cutting his way through the men. Um, incredible soldier and showing incredible bravery. Um, he, he finds McDonald and he unseamed him from the nave to the chaps, meaning from his belly button to his neck. He sliced him open and fixed his head upon our battlements. So here we get this impression that Macbeth is this valiant soldier, this brave warrior who is fighting for Duncan. And this is a contrast, this is a huge contrast to what Macbeth will eventually become um, later in this play, okay? And so the rest of this scene is, is pretty much describing the battle and describing how Macbeth is just this incredible soldier. Um, so Duncan says, go, um, go ahead soldier you go get go to the surgeon and um he they end up describing here the rest of this um duncan asks to ross who's another lord where camest thou worthy thane um now ross is also explaining the valor of macbeth so we've had the soldier explaining the valor and mc and ross um okay so he says that uh, he describes the Thane of Cawdor, who's a rebel, 
he says that the king of Norway himself, um, assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of, Thou of Kaldor, till that Balana's bridegroom, lapped in proof, confronted him with self-comparisons, point against point, rebellious. So he's saying that the king of Norway was assisted by the rebel Thane of Kaldor, and that the only one, Balana, was the Roman goddess of war. And so Bologna's bridegroom is referred to, that's referring to Macbeth, once again, describing how incredibly brave and valiant he is. So Macbeth confronts Bologna's bridegroom, or B Macbeth, Bologna's bridegroom, confronts the Thane of Caldor, and the victory fell on them. Okay, so um, Duncan says that the Thane of Caldor shall be put to death because he was a rebel and that his former title will greet Macbeth. So now we know Macbeth is now the new Thane of Cowder, but he doesn't know it yet. Okay, act one, scene three. This is the three witches again. Okay, this is after the battle. Now notice, yes, Macbeth is now the Thane of Cowder, but he does not know it yet. So this is the witches right after this, this incredible battle. This is what happens. So these first three this first page is really strange. The witch is, the witch is describing this moment. Um, it's not really that important. Basically, she transforms into a rat, and she's going to harass this, this man. Um, not important. Okay. So then you have um, drum within. A drum, a drum, Macbeth, Macbeth hath, doth come. So the weird sisters hand in hand, posters of the sea and land, thus do go about, about, thrice to not thrice. Thrice to thine and thrice to mine and thrice again to make up nine. Peace, the charms wound up. Macbeth and Banquo enter. So Macbeth and Banquo enter and they see the weird sister standing there. So Macbeth says, so foul and fair a day I have not seen. And Banquo says, um, what are these so withered and so wild in their attire that they look not like the inhabitants of the earth and yet are on it? Live you? Are you off that man may question? He's basically saying, what? He's looking at the weird sisters and he's saying, what are you? What? You don't look like human beings. Are you people? Are you humans? What are you? Macbeth says, speak if you can. What are you? The first witch then says, hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Glamis. That is Macbeth's current title. The second witch says, all hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Cowdor. All hail Macbeth that shall be king hereafter. So the three witches in this scene are giving a prophecy. Okay. They are prophesying to Macbeth that he will be the Thane of Cawdor and that he will be the king hereafter. Now, y'all, this is extremely important. Um, this is e extremely important because this is, there's a king already. And he has two adult sons, Mac Mac Malcolm and Donaldane. What has to happen for Macbeth to become king? Okay, those three have to die. And so this is, a, when Macbeth hears this, his mind, you'll see, immediately goes to murder. Banquo is this honorable good man, and he says, Good sir, why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? In the name of truth, are you fantastical, or that indeed which outwardly you show? My noble partner, you greet with present grace and great prediction of noble having and of royal hope. To me, you speak not. Basically, Banquo's like, why did you tell Macbeth some stuff? Tell me some stuff about my future. The first witch says, hail, 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 lesser than Macbeth and greater, not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So hail Macbeth and Banquo. So, they then prophesied to Banquo. He, they said that you'll be lesser than Macbeth and greater, not so happy yet much happier, that you will, your sons and your grandsons will be kings, but you won't be king. So Banquo was there. This is very interesting information. Okay. Okay. Um, so then we have Banquo says, the earth hath bubbles as the water has, and these are of them. I think that's a really cool line, basically describing the witches vanish. And he's like, was that real? What happened there? Okay. 
So um, Macbeth and Banquo were like, that can't be true. There's no way it could be true. We must have just imagined that. Um, and then Ross enters. Ross, who has been tasked to tell Macbeth about the king granting him this new title. Okay, and so Ross ends up saying, you know, that um, that he says, we are sent to give thee from our royal master thanks and herald thee into his sight, not pay thee. And for an earnest of a greater honor, he bade me from him call the Thane of Cawdor. Okay, so now we find out this interesting piece of the information. These witches had just told Macbeth that he is the Thane of Cawdor, and now it's come true. So in, in Macbeth's mind, he's like, well, if this is true, then it must be true that I will be king. What do I have to do to make that happen? Okay. Um, okay, this is interesting. This is Macbeth. And if you notice the stage directions, he says aside, and then he says another aside. This means that Macbeth is saying this next thing to himself. There are other people present, but he, only he can hear this. He says, um, this supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why hath it in er given me earnest of success, commencing in a truth? I am Thane of Cawdor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? That is him saying, if this is good news, then why am I imagining killing my king? Why am I immediately thinking about murder? Okay, so that's how we know Macbeth is immediately now plotting how he's going to become king. Then if you see here, Macbeth says, if chance will have me king, why chance may crown me without my stir? Meaning, well, maybe I'll become king and I won't have to murder anybody. Okay, so that is act one, scenes one through three. I'm gonna discuss act one, scenes four through seven in just a minute. Uh, be sure you tune into that video.